There's something really complex happening in the existence of humans. And it's like, there's the, there's the body and then there's the soul and there's that, this, that, what's happening inside, what's happening beneath the skin. My hearing loss is really, I think what attracted me to people and painting people and being interested in people because I, um, I have to read lips and I also have to read body language and you know so there's lots of things for me to communicate and that's made me very aware of people and the compositions and the you know the feeling and the emotions coming from them so for me the emotions were very raw in the beginning it wasn't until I really matured um, as an artist as a person that I was able to kind of harness the emotions into something that was more subtle as I switched to watercolor, it was very light and bright and airy. And then the contrast of like a heavier emotion gave a balance. My process is very structured in the beginning, in the early stages, it's very structured. And then as the painting develops, it gets looser. Early on in art education, they say, keep a sketchbook. I do not keep a sketchbook. I don't like to sketch. I don't like to do any preliminary stuff. I have a vision for what I'm gonna paint and I like to just jump into the painting and just deal with whatever needs to be worked out. I have like one palette, messy and ugly. It's kind of got the full scale of all these colors. But when it's like this on the title, it can get kind of muddy and, and, and I like that. I like having all those little variations. So then I have other tiles where just the warm colors, just the cool colors. So when I need to get the fresh, pure color, I can just go to these. And these are really easy to kind of flip back and forth. And, um, and I just have stacks of them with different palettes for different paintings. I love work that still has that carefree nature to it. And um, it, there's just so much energy in that. Some people might look to the masters to get inspiration. I look the other way. I'm like, I want to see the work that people don't know what they're doing yet. It's like, there's magic there. My subjects are my children and my grandchildren and their friends. And a lot of people will think that inspiration's out there somewhere or they have to, you know, go take a workshop or read a book or go to, you know, find inspiration out there. But the inspiration really is right inside of you. It's very close. The most success you're, you're gonna have is by dedicating yourself to the process and spend lots and lots and lots of hours working on the process because it's in that process that you master the material and that's when your art becomes in focus. That's the only way you can do it. The biggest um, compliment that I get, and I've gotten it several times, is um, when people say that they struggle with depression or anxiety and that the staring at the images give them a sense of calm and healing and it helps them um, get through depression and anxiety. That's, I mean, that's like the best compliment anyone could ever give me.